Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today I have another sit down and talk through I have the hiccups. I have another sit down talk through video with you guys and this is actually going to be a travel video, but essentially I'm just going to go over how I plan for trips. This is a question that I've been getting more and more on like Instagram DMs for example. Um, and people just ask me like, hey, like how do you plan where Hold up. question that I've been getting more and more kind of through my Instagram DMs as I am traveling a little bit more and people are just asking like hey how do you plan for your trips or like how do you plan to budget for these trips how do you plan for your itinerary which I totally understand I didn't really start traveling until about two ish years ago um, is when I started to like really travel on my own or with my friends and um, I'm definitely somebody who likes to have everything planned out I've always been that person um, I've always been known in my friend group that like if you are traveling with me you pretty much don't have to like do anything just buy your plane ticket and then um, pay me back for everything else because I will have everything planned out like in an itinerary day by day for our entire trip so it's always been something that's been pretty fun for me so I just want to go ahead and share all of my tips and tricks that I picked up in over the last like two years on planning trips if you guys are interested in learning some of that just keep on watching so the first question I always always think about when I am uh, deciding that I want to go on a vacay go on a trip go on a content trip whatever it is is just where do I want to go it's so simple but at the same time it's one of the hardest things to decide now from the way I see it, you can decide it in two kind of ways. Um, you can kind of just look at where you want to go, what, what places you're interested in. If you have a bucket list of places you want to go, if your friends have been there and it looks like somewhere that you want to go, um, do some research on Instagram, look at people's travel videos. There's so much inspirational travel content out there now that it's not hard to find a place that you want to visit. But if you are a little bit more budget conscious, whether that is because you're in school whether that's because you just got bills to pay as an adult and traveling is expensive sometimes something else you can do when you're deciding where you want to go is look at deal websites so I actually frequently check YVR deals and secret of flying YVR deals is great because if you're in Vancouver it is focused on all um, cheaper flights that are flying out of the YVR airport but they do actually also include flights that are flying out of like Abbotsford for example like close by YVR um, secret flying is more on the broad side you can decide which uh, I guess like region you are flying out of so there's like Canada and then like the states different states all of that um, so you can pick where you are flying out of and then it will show you some of the deals that um, are flying out of that location so if you are budget conscious you can look at these deal sites and look at all of the options because often most of those places are going to be amazing places to fly to anyways I know there are always deals on like Asia like Hong Kong Tokyo and Thailand for example there are deals that go obviously to um, other cities in Canada there are deals for me that go into the states to like Florida to um, California I've seen I've seen New Orleans a couple times I've seen Mexico so there are honestly so many deals going on all throughout the year so just kind of keep in the back of your mind to track those a little bit and I think it'll make it a lot easier for you to decide where you want to go for your next trip another tool that I actually use if for example I decided that I want to go to LA for a weekend um, I use the tool hopper if you guys haven't heard of hopper before it's this great App that you can download on your iPhone I don't know if they have Google store support but I know it is available in um, the I or Apple App Store um, but it allows you to track your flight so for example I'll punch in the destination that I want to go to my available dates and then it'll, it shows me all the prices um, in and around that date and then it allows you to track that flight um, so watch that flight is what it calls it and then whenever that flight price drops or it thinks it's gonna drop it'll send you a little reminder on your phone just to be like hey like right now it's at a great price we don't think it's gonna go any lower so buy now or 
don't buy right now the prices are high we suspect that it's gonna drop by like 10% or 20% in the next like three months so it's amazing if you if you have a little bit of time and you're planning more further into the future um, just to kind of track your flight rates it's great it has um, some sort of a prediction algorithm that gives you a pretty good idea of when the prices will drop when it's gonna raise and what's a good time to buy so very very useful tool if you are kind of keeping your budget in mind once you decide where you want to go, obviously you want to buy your flight. Some people actually do this in a different order. For me, I always, always buy my flight first because I'm the type of person that I feel like I don't actually put my focus in planning my trip until I bought my flight, like plane ticket, and I know for sure that I'm going. For some reason, if I'm just like planning something and I know that I want to buy for these specific dates, I still don't feel fully like committed and stable um, um, about that trip until I've purchased my flight ticket. Because once I purchase my flight ticket, I know like I am going for sure. The dates are set, like there's no turning back. So I like to always buy my plane ticket first for that reason. There are a few tools that I do use for when I buy my ticket as well. Hopper is one of them. Um, when I do want to plan further in the future, I can track my flights, track the prices, and it's amazing. Um, something else I use is Google Flights, um, Sky Scanner, Skipleg, and Momondo. Although I do use Momondo like pretty much never now. Um, it was something that I used a lot for when I first started traveling because it did show a really good range of prices. The only issue is I have encountered um, kind of like scammy travel companies and like flight companies through Momondo. So I don't think it filters out those very well. It kind of just shows you like everything that's on the market. So do keep that in mind if you plan on using Momondo. The one that I actually use the most now is actually just Google Flights. I find that Google Flights does the best job at finding every single option that is out there for you without kind of like the super shady one. So it usually honestly just looks at like airline airlines. So um, um, it'll show you like all the Air Canada options, all the WestJet options, all of that. I mean, it won't really show you any like travel companies options. Skyscanner is another great one that shows you all of the different prices. It tries to find always the cheapest price for you. Obviously, there's filters that you can use both in Google Flights and Skyscanner where you can filter out like um, stops or filter out like long delays or not delays, long, um, what are they called? long layovers oh my god i just blanked so hard there but yeah they do have great filter features like that for you to filter out all of the flights that you don't want um hopper does as well um so it just makes it really easy for you to find the best kind of like alternative so best price but also like maybe less uh, layovers, less stops, stuff like that. Another great one that I use is actually Skiplegged. What Skiplegged does is a little bit different than what all the other companies uh, do. Skiplegged, when you use it, you are able to find regular flights as well, but what it does is it, it tries to find um, connecting flights for you rather than ones that are going straight to the final destination. Well, okay, it goes straight to the final de destination, but how it works is it tries to find flights where, let's say if you're trying to go to New York, New York is actually the connecting flight to the next destination. And sometimes when you're going through a connecting flight like that, it's cheaper than when you are actually just flying directly into New York. So for example, if you're traveling to New York and you know the dates, it'll look at all of the options and it's going to try to find ones that, let's say if you're flying from Vancouver, but um, in that case, that flight is actually headed to uh what's a like a good uh, example i don't know miami or whatever but it'll find that flight that people are trying to get to miami but need to stop over in new york so it'll find that flight where the flight path actually is vancouver to new york to miami but what you do is you book that and you just don't take the next flight to miami you just stop in your final destination which is new york and usually that will be a little bit cheaper the downside of that is that you will not be able to have check bags on these flights and they do put it in like big text when you're checking out that you won't be able to uh, bring in check 
checked luggage because when you're going through a connecting flight like that, the checked luggage will automatically be put on from the first flight to the second leg of your flight. So because you're not actually going to Miami, you're gonna lose your luggage. So if you are planning to book with skip legs, um, make sure that you just have your carry-on baggage with you. That way there's no mistake of your baggages getting shipped off to the next location. Um, so that way you can still get the cheaper price without essentially losing your baggage. When I am booking flights, I like to check my flights like throughout the day, whether I'm at a coffee shop, whether I'm like on the go, um, wherever I am, because there are gonna be certain times where the flights are better just like at random points throughout the day, like they're cheaper around points throughout the day. And because I do work remotely, I work a lot out of coffee shops. Um, if I'm like on a trip and I need to purchase a flight, obviously I'm gonna be like doing it out of a coffee shop, doing it out of my hotel, whatever. Um, something that I really enjoy using is a VPN service. And I can go on about so many benefits that a VPN service offers like when I'm traveling it allows me let's say when I was in Bali it allows me to watch Netflix from back home instead of like um, Indonesian Netflix I could watch Netflix from Canada I can watch Netflix from the US when I'm actually in Vancouver in my apartment I can still watch um, Netflix from the US if I'd like to. I was in China where all social media was blocked. It allowed me to still access all of the social media that I needed and it still allowed me to pretty much continue on my job of posting on YouTube and posting on Instagram. So there's just so many reasons why I recommend a VPN service, especially when you are purchasing anything, not just flights, but because this video is about traveling, when you're purchasing your flights, um, outside of your home internet, you want to make sure that your information is encrypted and that you're not gonna get any of your information stolen just because you're using a public Wi-Fi. The VPN service that I use is NordVPN and they were very, very kind to offer you guys a great deal on their services. So if you guys wanna purchase a VPN plan for the next time that you're traveling or if you're just at home using Netflix, go to nordvpn.org slash angel and then use the code ANGEL at checkout for a 75% off a three year subscription plan with an additional month for free. So instead of paying over, I think like just over $430 for a three year subscription, you are paying $107 for your three year subscription and an additional month, which comes out to be about $2.99 a month. This is great because it's gonna cover anything that you need it for for the next three years. You don't have to worry about your Netflix, you don't have to worry about encryption, you don't have to worry about your data getting stolen when you're out working just at a coffee shop. It's great for so many reasons and I highly recommend it. The next part of planning for me is definitely structuring your trip. So what that means to me is purchasing all of your transportation modes in all the other kind of like in-between parts of your trip. So the first part was to buy your round trip home to your final destination and then back home. Um, after that, I look at whether I need to actually travel within my destination. So usually if I'm going to a place like LA, I don't worry so much about it because most of the places I just like Uber or I can rent a car, stuff like that. But for example, I'm going to Europe in October and the first flight that I purchased was obviously the flight from Vancouver to London and then London back to Vancouver. But after that, I had to structure everything else in between um, the dates that I'm coming and leaving London because I am traveling to a bunch of other places in Europe. So I had to purchase my flight from London to Berlin and then Berlin to Italy um, and all of those things in between. Like traveling throughout Italy um, by train, I wanna make sure that I have those train tickets booked. So everything in between, I just want to purchase right off the bat. That way it gives me a better idea of the dates um, that I am traveling to each place and how much time I have in each place to look for like activities to do and stuff like that. When you structure out your trip in kind of the first part of your planning, it just makes it so much easier to plan the rest of your trip. At least it does for me. So that's always my number two step. The third step, which you would think is purchasing all of your like hotel stays and like or Airbnb stays, it's actually not. It's actually looking at what you want to do in each location in your trip. So the reason I do this before I actually even look at hotels or Airbnbs is because I want to look at 
where everything I want to do is first. So if I'm going to London, for example, what are all the things that I want to see within London? What are all the restaurants that I want to eat at? Um, once I have kind of a master list, I usually do this in like a Google Doc. So I'll start a Google Doc, start a master list and just like have around all the places that I want to see you do some research for a day and just create a master list of all the activities and things I want to see and food I want to eat and then the next thing I'll do is create a custom map on my Google Maps and then um, plot out all of those places because that is gonna give you a much better idea of the areas that you're gonna be traveling in um, especially in like London for example I know I'm not gonna be renting a car because I'm just there for a couple of days so I will be ubering or taking the taxi or public transportation um, so I want to make it easy for myself and put where I'm living kind of close to all the stuff that I want to see. Once I finish doing that, I go on to step four, which is booking your hotels and your Airbnbs or wherever you're staying, like figuring out where you're going to live essentially. So I'm going to take that Google Maps that I created, the custom map, and um, look at what is the most centralized location that I can live without breaking the bank, of course, um, where it's going to be pretty convenient for me to go and do everything that I want to do. Now again, you can look at this, I guess, step in two ways. You can kind of look at it in the way where you're thinking, okay, I just want to be somewhere centralized, somewhere really convenient and close to all the stuff I want to do. And I don't mind shelling a little bit more money out for that. Or I know a lot of people who think of it as, okay, if I live a little bit further away from like the central of like central London, for example, it's going to be cheaper for me. Um, but something to consider is you also have to consider how much transportation from where you live to what you want to do is because I've had a lot of my friends make this mistake where they've booked a place and it's kind of outside of the main city um, it's a little bit further from what they want to do but it was a great price but then they end up spending more money on like ubers on taxis and on all of that just to get to the places that they want to go which to me is so not worth it because one not only are you wasting money but you're wasting your time and wasting your precious vacation of sitting in a car or sitting in a train or whatever it may be of course this is going to be a crucial time for you to decide what mode of transportation you're going to take within that destination um, whether that is like i said public transportation or whether you're going to pay for um, like a car service or whether you're going to take like an uber or a taxi or whether you're going to rent a car whether you're going to rent a scooter try and figure out what other people do um, you know there's so many blogs so many vlogs so many instagram people who talk about travel especially in like popular locations and they go in depth telling you you know what are the best ways for you to get around so listen to them think of those people as your peers and you're just taking advice from them because who is better to ask than another traveler that's been there so for example in Bali I found that in Ubud I did have to take their local taxis and although that was a little bit more expensive they actually do not allow um, bluebird taxis or any of those like taxis the apps to enter Ubud because they want to keep their local businesses alive. However, in a place like Semenyak or Uluwatu, it was super easy for me to just get a Bluebird, a Gojek. Um, even the locals there are very accepting of it just because it's such a tourist focused destination whereas Ubud is still they are they do kind of focus towards um, tourists but it's very very like local focused and they want to like support local want you to love local so it's a very different vibe and it's something that um, you do need to research and then also consider the traffic within the city that you're going to for example if you're in LA yes sure you can uber pool and that's really cheap but LA traffic is oh my god the worst thing ever so unless you want to spend like five hours of your day just sitting in traffic trying to get the places you want to go um, keep that in mind when you are booking your stay the last step of when I am planning a trip is to pretty much build out my itinerary so what that means is structuring out what you're gonna do day by day and of course always at the top of my itinerary I always include like my flight details my hotel details all of that and then um, yeah I literally go in and plot out every day like to the T. It's, it's slightly neurotic and I know it, but I'll go like, hey, drop that pen. Um, I'll go like, okay, arrive in Montreal 11 a.m. Pick up car at 11.30. 
um, drive to Airbnb and then I kind of like guesstimate how long it's gonna get there. Get to Airbnb and then I give myself some time to like chill out, whatever. Um, and then I can be like, go to coffee shop by 1 p.m. So I, re <laughs> I really go in there and plan out my days by time slots, like estimated time slots, obviously, because if things come up, things come up. But I like to have that at least there, um, just so I have an idea of all the things that I want to do in a day. Um, before I'm actually there and just like living those days because I find that if I don't at least give myself like a to-do list for that day of places I want to see, places I want to go, I kind of just waste my day away on my vacations and you know some vacations it's totally chill to do that. I'm totally all about like just taking the day as it goes, um, going with the flow, playing it by ear and I'm chill with that but there are trips where for example when I'm going to Europe I know it's it's a big trip it's an expensive trip and I just want to make sure that I'm making use of every moment of my day so what I do is I open up that Google Maps again and I make sure to see um, if I'm planning like a Monday for example okay these are all the places I want to go because they are close to each other on the map and it's gonna get it's gonna be easy for me to get to um, place A to place B to place C to lunch then I'm place D E and F and and then back to the hotel so it's very important for me to have my Google Maps created that's like a super essential part of when I'm planning a trip because it allows me to visualize where everything is how long it's gonna get from place to place and it makes it so much easier to plot out your itinerary a great app to use actually for your itinerary not exactly for like planning out day or like time slots or anything like that but to keep all of your like documents and reservations and all of those all together is Google Trips and also Tripcase. I actually use Tripcase first before I discovered Google Trips and I've always loved it but I just find that Google Trips is a little bit more intuitive because it connects to your um, like Google or like Gmail account so any travel document, travel reservations, bookings, whatever that come back into your Gmail like confirmations, Google Trips is going to automatically pull those into the app and it's going to sort it for you. Tripcase it does the same thing but the only thing about Tripcase is you have to actually manually email your bookings to a Tripcase um, email address so I find that that's just like slightly less efficient than Google Trips. You kind of start out Google Trips on the home page. It gives you all of your upcoming trips as well as all of your past trips and it's really great like that. Um, you can download each of those trips so that you can view all of the information offline. So once you click into the destination that you're going to, it breaks it down into reservations, things to do, saved places, day plans, discounts, food and drink, getting around and need to know. So all of your reservations, bookings are going to be in that first part, things to do. It's going to recommend some of those awesome things for you to do in that location and then you can go ahead and star certain things. It's gonna um, give you good like day plans so when other people plan their trips and upload it, you can check those out or you can create your own. And then once you save all of those or start all of those, um, they will be saved in your saved places tab for you to go back and look at. And it's great because it's gonna show you those things on a map as well. So it's doing exactly what I was doing in the kind of like last part of my trip, but in an app. Um, so realistically, you can just go ahead and do all of what I said on this app, but I still like to do it kind of on its own separately. You can use the app as a resource when you're researching stuff to do, um, but I do like to do it separately, have that separate, have my itinerary and my Google Docs, have all that written out because I can like type notes and stuff like that. Um, and I just find that it's the flow that works best for me. The last kind of like tip that I have is just to send your itinerary to somebody back home. Um, once you have all of this decided, especially, especially if you are traveling alone, this is like such a great tip for solo travelers. Um, and obviously female solo travelers, but send that itinerary to somebody that you love or multiple people, send it to your boyfriend, send it to your mom, your dad, your grandma, your aunt, um, your best friend, and just make sure that several people have your itinerary on hand with them so that in case, like God forbids, something happens to you, they know where you are or where you should have been during that time and um, if they get like authorities involved it's just a little bit more information for them to go off of rather than just being like yeah Angel went to Bali and she disappeared 
who the fuck knows what she was doing, right? So I think that it's very important, especially for solo travelers. I mean, it's it's gonna be a good thing anyways, whether you're solo traveling or whether you're traveling with a group, um, just in case. It's like just an extra level of insurance um, of your safety, but send it to people that you love, make sure somebody else sees it, and yeah. So those are all of my tips and tricks for planning a trip. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful for those of you who are looking to plan a trip soon or maybe in the future. I definitely didn't just like think of this workflow out like randomly one day. This, this took me like pretty much the last two years to kind of like perfect and figure out like what flow works for me. Obviously, you don't have to follow this exact flow to the T if it doesn't work for you, but you can take out bits and pieces and um, kind of use it to your advantage, um, whether it's like a tip that I did or whether it's like a specific thing that I did, like using the Google Maps function. Um, yeah, it's just like, it's just like another option for you to look at when you are planning your trip. And that's it. My voice is literally starting to hurt from how much talking I've done today. This is like the second video that I filmed today, so I'm slightly dying. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go. <laughs> I hope you guys are having an amazing day wherever you are in the world and yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. It's getting really dark, holy shit. This is like ominous, ominous. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah.